Friends, so much to look to at today in Luke 10. Let's get right at it. We have here now Jesus sending out a larger group than just the apostles. This is the 72 now that are being sent out with a kingdom of God message. He tells them to go into every town where he's about to come. And he says this, he says the harvest, he's talking about of souls, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So they're supposed to be laborers in the harvest. And they're also supposed to pray for more laborers. And we need to think about ourselves as the answer to that prayer in our day and age, that we're laborers for the harvest in his church. And he says, look, it's not gonna be easy. I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. So he also says to them, you gotta trust me. In other words, don't carry any money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, so forth. He says, look, you're gonna trust me. And where you go, you speak peace to the house where you'll stay, remain there. But what if they don't respect you there and they don't want to receive you? Well, then you have to shake the dust off of your feet from that town. He said, he says, you say to them that the kingdom of God has come near to you. That's true. See, wherever the church goes, if it brings a message of the gospel with integrity, the kingdom of God is near, and Jesus has sent us to that place. Now, he speaks these words of judgment against some of the cities where miracles have been performed. He says, woe to you. Look, if, if he had done in some Gentile cities what he's done in your city, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So what this is telling us is that when the gospel is preached, the appropriate response of those who hear, wherever they are in any time, the appropriate response is to repent, to turn away from sin and surrender to the king of the kingdom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so they, do, they go out and they do what he tells them, had told them to do, these 72, and then they returned and they were rejoicing because they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. They were they were just amazed. And he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know, something happened in the heavenlies as a result of this. And he's the one, you know, who gave them authority, as he puts it, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He did that. But he said, look, don't rejoice in that, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's the way for all of us. And I'm just happy to be a part of this kingdom. And the fact that you actually use me as an agent of your good news, uh, all the better, but thankful just to be a part of your kingdom. And, and so Christ says this, he rejoices that these, these simple men have been used really in preference to the powerful and the educated. He said, you've hidden, he's praying to God. He says, you've hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children, the little children, his own disciples. And he said, that, that's all in your gracious will. This is your plan, your will. And he says, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. He's talking to his disciples now. Because he said, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, and they did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Now, then he tells a very famous parable of the Good Samaritan. And he does this because one of the teachers of the law, religious law we're talking about here now, teach, he says, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he, Jesus responds with this question, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he talks about the two great commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, you've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. And, but it says the man was desiring to justify himself. And he said, who is my neighbor? Now, you know the story. Jesus tells the story to answer the question. And we have two very religious types, the priest, the Levite. They see someone left for dead on the side of the road. They ignore him because they're so clean and they got to stay clean and they're religious 
in that way. And our religion needs to be better than that. And, and, and what does it have to be like? Well, like a good Samaritan, someone coming up from the north and he, he, uh, He's not respected as a religious type. And what does he do? He actually takes care of the man. Here's the trick to this parable. We got to find Jesus in it. See, he's the one who is so unexpected, who came and he saw us in our need. We were like bloody and dead on the side of the road. And he came and he brought us to life. And all he asks of us is complete surrender, repentance. Like Mary of Mary and Martha, she knows the better portion she throws herself down at the feet of the one who is the answer for us. Thank you, Father, for the good Samaritan, truly the Savior of our souls, the, the God of our salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.